That's encouraging, Megan. I'm glad you're excited. I'm excited. Stop it, Andy. Hey, Deb. Yeah, exactly. Where is everyone else? Nobody knows. Could just be us. Hey, Andy. Toronto Michelle. Daryl. Yes. Uh, this is the most bloated episode we've done. Or are about to do. Did I say hi, Toronto Michelle? Okay, so what am I doing here, you're wondering? Because it is backing track week, and I did a Dark Side of the Moon, which is very bloated, and <clears throat> I have a, uh, what I'm going to do, Adam, his mom and dad too. I'm getting ready here. I just do a wee bit of a sound check. Gives you an idea where we're going with this. So around. Around the time we did... Um, Mayapan in 2018 or something like that. Adam was there, right, Adam? We recorded it uh, at Chalet with uh, Terry Brown. Was it Maya? Yes. And then later we did Beneath the Desert a year later. So maybe it was 2017. I don't know. I'm losing track of time. And it was a uh, two big... Long 14-minute songs that wanted to take up a side each. And preparing for that record, I did about another hour's worth of songs and soundscapes. And we decided to do one record, uh, one song aside. And we fleshed out the each, each song is in three sections. Kind of a beginning section, a soundscape section, and then a closing jam section. It was supposed to be a jam band live in the studio, jam band, shoegaze type thing. All right, Helen. Excellent. Now, um, it's before we knew you, Andy. I don't think we knew. This is, this is all pre, pre-tribe, pre pre-COVID, pre-everything, right? So what I thought I wanted is here's what I mean. Okay, so. I did the dark side of the moon thing, you know. <clears throat> wow, good one. Uh, Adam's Adam's got the laminate. He knows he knows what time it is. Now it was the September. Uh, it was up beneath the desert. Was, that was my pen, Adam. Because then we did, we right. How many months later did we do my uh, beneath the desert at? Uh, um, we did. We finished beneath the desert at, at Chalet st Studio, but that was a private session. That was not part of the recording masterclass, right? Yeah, right. A good one, Adam. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody was there. Just us in the studio, Adam, for for uh, that one. But it was a great session. It's so great to work with Kevin and Cody. So nice to be back at a giant, another giant bloated project with them, and Terry, of course. We're uh fin we're actually recording two records worth of material. We've we've already done one. Not this one I'm talking about. I'm talking about a new one and then another, another new one. So <clears throat> I allotted I allotted myself ten minutes to talk before the big uh, hour and fifty minute version of Maya Pan. Maya Pan includes earlier recordings um, from other records like the hidden. Reality, which is a very lengthy steel guitar piece, ambient. We also have 
I know I've got the unspillable uh, 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 mug. I'm not messing around, Deb. You know what else I'm doing, Deb? I'm doing the new Deli Deb episode Sunday, the Sunday Sitar episode. That's right. It's going to be great. <laughs> Ken is losing. Somewhere, somewhere in the universe, Ken is losing his mind. That's 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 true, Andy. And um, uh, what else am I going to say? Uh, and I know, Alan, I got another minute. I, I gave myself a couple of minutes. I can I can ramble on. So, um, yeah, you're busy. No, you're going to be there. It's going to be great. I, I promise. I promise. It's going to be a good one. So, and there's some early spoken word with computer-generated voice and stuff that I did 20 years ago, and they are demanding lengthy pieces. So get comfortable, get something to eat or drink, and um, put on the headphones. And um, I hope, and I'm saying I'm a lot, and I thought I got away from that. So this is the two-hour version of my opinion. You guys are very brave, and I must thank you ahead of time because I would have never thought I could get away with this stuff. Uh, I am very, very happy to be uh, um, bringing this uh, utter madness to you. I got the shirt on. Okay. Oh, and... Carolyn dropped off uh, cannolis today as a thank you for six cannolis for 600 episodes. I will have time during the lengthy sessions to make sound effects and eat cannoli and have my coffee.
Not this time, Andy. Open the door, Hal.
demanding listen, so I appreciate you guys checking this stuff out.
I hear it, Megan. Money, too.
is the uh, cannoli portion of the program. Thank you, guys. This is um, the 20th anniversary of the Atom Smashers Noisy Trade, which is what you're listening to part part two of that right now. Very good. Caroline was up in Woodbridge. And she brought six of them. So this is the last one. Thank you, Helen. So this is uh, story time. Deb, even with my brother and my mom and dad. But I had two. So, here's the story. So, Put out some cassettes and um, some and a CD or so in the 90s. And uh, when CD Baby came into existence, yeah, this is the old pedal board on them. This is uh, before all the Pigtronic stuff. But I put out a bunch of uh, albums about 20 years ago, starting in 2004. And they sound, uh, there was a a few that were very soundscapey and loop based. Right, no Andy. And uh, uh, this is is the uh, record I made in my Roland studio with my pedal board. Yeah, it was a big pedal board too though. It was actually in three sections, not two sections. I have newer versions of a lot of the things that were on the old pedal board. And I have newer, improved, uh, powerful Pictronics things. But you see, I kind of sound the same, but I sound better now. more pedals onto the two boards than there were on the three boards so it's actually it's actually bigger it's crazier more powerful and I can't uh, I can't say uh, there's no problem saying that I grew up on electro harmonics effects because um, Mike uh, Matthews the guy who started Electro Harmonics was a designer and a partner in Pigtronics. I'm sorry, the guy who started Electro Harmonics. So all the effects are very related and very interesting. Everything, of course, you're hearing is all guitar. So this is 
the super long version of Maya Pan, and we're coming into Beneath the Desert, which is now a kind of a 40 minute version of Beneath the Desert. Yes, this is, uh, I should have just called the episode Super Bloated. Oh, can you imagine Adam there? Triple, a box set, right? Muffins were good, Daryl.
just had the cannoli. Carolina was delicious. They're all gone. I even shared.
when the individual truly sees that every move he makes is a move away, a resistance, then the entire machination of resistance winds down. When he sees this resistance in every move he makes, then quite spontaneously he surrenders resistance altogether. And the surrendering of this resistance is the opening of unity consciousness, the actualization of no boundary awareness. He awakens, as if from a long and foggy dream, to find what he knew all along. He, as a separate self, does not exist. His real self, the all, was never born, will never die. There is a new consciousness as such in all directions, absolute and all-pervading, radiant through and as all conditions, the source and suchness of everything that arises moment to moment, bodily prior to this world, but not other than this world. All things are just a ripple in this pond, all arising is a gesture of this one. But we have seen, then, that the special conditions of spiritual practice show the individual all of his resistances, while simultaneously frustrating them at the very deepest levels. In short, the conditions show us our way jumping, and then make it finally impossible. The turning point comes when the person sees that everything he does is nothing but wave jumping, resisting, moving away from now in search of better waves. Spiritual practice, whether a person realizes it in these terms or not, hinges on this primal pivot. For until he sees that absolutely everything he does is resistance, he will secretly continue to move away, to grasp, to seek and thus to totally prevent the discovery. He will move away without realizing he is moving away. If he doesn't see that all his actions are resistances, he will still believe there is some move he can make to get unity consciousness. Until he sees that everything is nothing but a moving away, he will simply continue to move away. He will think he has a choice, an alternative, something to do, some way out. And so he continues to make a move, a move which is always away, and thus a move that erects a barrier to unity consciousness which was not there to begin with. The reason he doesn't get unity consciousness is because he wants to, but at the very point he sees that everything he does is a resistance, a looking away and moving away, then he has no choice but to surrender. He cannot, however, try to do this, or try not to. We have seen that doesn't work at all, for both tries are just more movings away. Rather, it happens of itself, spontaneously, when he sees that nothing he can do, or not do, will work, because unity is always already the case. The very seeing of the resistance is the dissolution of the resistance, and the acknowledgement of the prior unity. Once this primal resistance begins to dissolve, one separate self dissolves with it. For it is not that you, on the one hand, see you moving away, on the other. It might start this way, with you as a separate self seeing the resistance as an activity of yours. But as you begin to see that everything you do is a resistance, you start to see that even your feeling of being a separate self in here is also nothing but a resistance. When you feel yourself, all you feel is a tiny inner tension, a subtle contraction, a subtle moving away. The feeling of self and the feeling of moving away are one and the same. But as this becomes obvious, there are no longer two different feelings here, no longer an experiencer on the one hand having an experience on the other hand, but only one, single, all-pervasive feeling, the feeling of resistance. You don't feel this resistance, you are this feeling of resistance. The feeling of self condenses into the feeling of resistance, and both dissolve. Thus, to the extent this primal resistance dissolves, your separation from the world also dissolves. 
there spontaneously comes a deep and total surrender of existence, of the unwillingness to gaze upon the present in all its forms, and thus a complete isolation of the primary boundary erected between inside and outside. When you no longer are resisting present experience, you no longer have a motive to separate yourself from it. The world and the self are turning as one single experience, not two different ones. No longer to one wave jump, for there's only one wave and it's everywhere. Further, when we are no longer moving away from experience, experience no longer seems to move past us. To no longer resist the present is to see that there is nothing but the present, no beginning, no end, nothing behind it, nothing in front of it. When the past of memory and the future of anticipation are both seen to be present facts, then this lasts to this present collapse. The boundaries around this moment fall into this moment, and then there is nothing but this moment, with nowhere else to go. Said an old Zen master, myself of long ago, in nature non-existent, nowhere to go and then, nothing at all. It thus becomes apparent why the search for unity consciousness was so exasperating. Everything I tried to do was wrong because everything was already and eternally right. Even what appeared as a primal existence to Brahman was actually a movement of Brahman, because there is nothing but Brahman. There never was, nor will there ever be, any time other than now. What appeared as a primal moving away from now was really an original movement of now. Home shall you show it. Original enlightenment is known just practice. The eternal now is its movements. The ocean waves surge freely against the shore, bearing the cables and shells.
Wow. Ended right at 10. Thanks. You guys are still there. That's amazing. Two-hour version of Maya Pan. Wow. With cannolis. Thanks, everybody. The spoken word piece is computer generated on a, on a uh, that's a Mac voice. And uh, my first iMac would, you could put in text, type in text. And uh, thank you, Deb. And that's the kind of Stephen Hawking sounding voice. <clears throat> early, early AI from 20 years ago. So that, that tune, or that tune, that soundscape is Ken Wilber text, the philosopher. And uh, with computer-generated voice recorded 20 years ago, and uh, among other things. But uh... <laughs> really, Megan, that's amazing. Are you talking about the two-hour thingy? And I'm doing. Uh, I will do. I will do uh, Monarch on uh, on um, Sunday for the Sitar Sunday episode. You guys are great. This is so much fun that people are there to listen to this craziness. So thank you, Carolina. Thanks for the cannoli. And uh, thank you, Daryl. Yeah, I know, Daryl, but it's essentially the same uh, type of voice. If you look at old programs on old Macs, you, you have maybe a half a dozen choices of voices. And that one was the one that sounded like what they had used for Stephen Hawkins' uh, computer voice. Because it's an Apple, probably an Apple thing, right? Hey, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Hey, do you like that on the headphones, Andy? Thank you, Helen. Yeah, you're right. You can watch it, Megan. That's the thing. That's the great thing about YouTube is it's archived properly, and the stuff is there, you know, in perpetuity, uh, or as far as we know, and something unless something happens ca uh, catastrophic uh, with Google. And uh, thanks, Daryl and Deb. And uh, Adam. Who else is there? It's a, maybe it's a small group tonight, but that was fun. So uh, thanks so much for listening, everybody. See you, Helen. Yeah, thank you, Adam. Adam likes the, Adam likes the guitar effects. Those are some expensive sounds, right, Adam? Right, Adam? Well, I'm glad you liked it, Mom and Dad. And uh, we'll see you Sunday at noon. Nancy's at some some Benoit something or other. I don't know who that is. Thank you, Daryl. That was fun. Expensive and spacey. That's a good combination. All right. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you Sunday. <coughs>